Good afternoon, this sunny afternoon from St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Mount Lebanon. I'm very pleased to be here with Dr. Susan Woodard, and we have a program of three pieces. The first piece uh, is by Bach, which happens to be, by some scholars' estimation, his birthday today. So the wonderful Friends of Music of St. Paul's Episcopal, I want to thank you and this coincidence of it being his birthday as well. Bach's dates are 1685 to 1750. The suite that I'm going to play, uh, number three in C major, has a prelude, Aleman Courant, Sarabande, Tu Mores, and a Gigue. It was composed in Kürten, uh, part of then Germany, between 1770 and 1723, sometime in those years. The Catalan cellist Pablo Casals, at age 13, was rummaging around a Barcelona thrift shop. He found an obscure edition of those, and from neglect during Casals' career, he brought them to popularity. Some interesting facts, or some facts about Bach, is he was an orphan at age 10. Uh, during his lifetime, he was much more famous as an organist than a composer. In 1705, he walked on foot 200 miles to hear Buxtehude play. And Bach went to jail for a couple weeks to a month. Some prince was not pleased when he left the position early. And Bach had 20 children. More famous during Bach's lifetime was the composer Handel. And George Friedrich Handel lived no more than 130 kilometers from Bach in that part of Germany, but they never met. But Bach did meet Pachelbel of the famous canon. Bach had trouble with his eyesight, and Handel also had trouble with his eyesight, and coincidentally, they both got operated on by the same eye surgeon, and he failed them both. They both ended up blind. And Bach died at age 65. He was five feet, 11 inches tall, which is quite tall for that time, which is, incidentally, is the same height as Dvorak. Felix Mendelssohn was instrumental in the revival and repopularity of Bach's work. Okay, Bach suite number three.
The next piece, unlike the previous one, which was originally for cello, is for viola. It's the one piece on the entire program that is originally for viola. And it was written by George Pearsall, a very talented composer. The title of the piece is Trinity, and it tells the story of Hans Warsch, who was a Polish composer. He was captured and interned at Sachsenhausen concentration camp. He survived the war. He went on to a, a still fabulous career and as a composer. Uh, George Pearsall is from Newcastle, Pennsylvania, and he taught and is retired now from teaching at Northgate High School. Uh, he lives in Pittsburgh. He's a member of the Tuesday Musical Club. He also, I believe, has some kind of cottage or house by a lake, a little north of Pittsburgh. And like the composer Puccini, I think George likes going out on boats in the lake. Puccini liked to go out in uh, Como and some other Italian lakes, but uh, George likes these Pennsylvania lakes. And boy, is he a talented composer. Wherever I've played this piece, uh, people, have, people have liked it. I haven't played it that, that much, but uh, they've really uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to try to get George to write maybe a, a set of three pieces or something, maybe something for uh, viola and piano or something for violin and viola or something. And maybe we'll have a set of three pieces. But I'm so happy uh, that I asked him to write a piece because now the viola repertoire has a, uh, a wonderful piece written for the viola. So it's Trinity or Viola Alone.
George for writing that. On to our third piece and final piece. Um, George Pearsall is six feet one inch tall. I can tell you someone else who's six feet one inch tall. That was Franz Liszt. Franz Liszt dates are 1811 to 1886. We're going to play a song. It has text by Victor Hugo. Obviously, you won't hear the text because it's, the viola will be playing the vocal part. And I'm so happy uh, Dr. Susan Woodard is going to be playing the piano for us. Uh, and she was a great mentor and coach and provided me with a lot of inspiration and in trying to raise my playing level and raise my musicianship. She's terrific. Um, Back to Franz Liszt, though, he studied with Czerny. All the piano students love when their teacher tells them, go out and get the Czerny book. They, they always love that, doing the exercise. And Czerny was, in turn, was a pupil of Beethoven. Liszt also studied with Salieri, the, from the infamous Amadeus. Uh, around 10 years of age, the whole Liszt family packed up and they went to Paris. And their intention was for little Franz to enter the Paris Conservatoire. But being a foreigner, he was not admitted, even though the family came armed with a note by Metternich, a powerful Austrian statesman of the time. Well, Liszt had a wonderful career anyway. He became a friend of Richard Wagner, who in turn married his daughter Cosima. One of Liszt's last known pianos when it was in his villa in Italy. It was last played by the Polish composer, pianist, statesman, Ignacz Paderewski in 1904. Then it disappeared. It was rediscovered in 1991 and authenticated. It was found in Rome. At Liszt's funeral, Anton Bruckner, famous for his long, long symphonies, uh, played at his funeral. Bruckner was an organist. Uh, Heinrich Heine, famous, coined the term Listomania, because Liszt was quite a heartthrob during his day, and he ended his days as a Franciscan monk. This piece is just transcendental. The piano part is such superb writing. Every time I, I, I listen to this piece, my, I just can't, can't believe the, what he does with the piano on this piece. So I hope you enjoy our final selection. And it's so good to be in St. Paul's playing because I had many wonderful experiences here. I got to play Messiah and some things with your wonderful choir and your, your, your wonderful music director Doug Starr, so I was really happy in my younger years to have uh, participated in some of the, that. Uh, so here is the list. Thank you. 
Thank you for listening.